I'm in Bedford today uh, and really, really fortunate to have uh, the time of Mr. Tony Reeves, the Chief Executive of Bradford City Council. Uh, Bradford is a very multicultural, multi-ethnic city, like so many cities in Britain. And you may recall that one of the principal aims of the Masala Tour was to, to make the India in Britain visible. Uh, there is a lot of attention to the India in India, but we want to make visible the India in Britain and its creativity and dynamism. But also, there was a social aim behind this enterprise, which was to see how the wisdom of India, which is still alive in Britain, can help solve some of the deepest problems of Britain, be it health, economic or social. So firstly, uh, Mr. Reeves, can you tell us a little bit about the India in Bradford? Okay, well, um, the Indian population in Bradford make up approximately 3% of the population. Um, according to the figures that have um, been prepared for me in advance of this discussion, um, the population is estimated about 14,800 people, which is just a touch under 3% of the population. Uh, about 20% of the population are from um, black and minority ethnic populations, so it's a, a sizable chunk of that. And to put it into context, um, you said that Bradford um, was a diverse place. Um, it is and it always has been very diverse. Bradford is a, a city built on immigration. So if you look at the population of Bradford, in 1801 it was about 15,000 people by 1901 it was over 200,000 people and this was migration from sort of rural parts of, of Great Britain into the urban centres with the Industrial Revolution obviously Bradford was one of the key um, engines of the Industrial Revolution particularly in terms of engineering and, the, and particularly the wool trade but then we've seen wave, wave after wave of uh, immigration into Bradford from the Irish community, West Indian community, from the Indian subcontinent, from, um, from Eastern Europe. And, and some of that continues to this day with people from all over the world coming to Bradford. And the, the population um, is, is made up of something like, at the last count, 68 different languages by far the most diverse in the north of England and a very rich and distinctive place because of that and I think in that context um, we look at the sort of role that Indian people play in Bradford and some of it is very visible in terms of um, I think 11 of the top 200 businesses in the district are, are, are Indian run businesses uh, and that's hugely important for our economy um, if you look at um, you know, visible landmarks, the new Hindu temple on Leeds Road, uh, which I believe is the biggest Hindu temple built in the UK outside of London, um, it cost between three and four million pounds, all of it raised from the Hindu community in Britain itself, which suggests to me that Hindus from all over Britain and of course further afield see Bradford as an important place for them, which I, I think is, is hugely important. If you look at the business school in Bradford, uh, one of the best in Europe and in the top two or three in the UK, um, on the full-time MBA course last year, I don't have this year's figures I'm afraid, but um, 53 of the students on the full-time Masters in Business Administration course were from India and were overseas students coming to Bradford Business School to study. Um, then looking at the um, young Indian population growing up in Bradford, when we look at academic attainment, um, the Indian um, young people do better than any other group, including white children, in terms of their academic qualifications, and are hugely important because that means that they're a skilled, well-educated part of the population. They're hugely important to the city's future. So uh, I think whichever way you look at it, um, the India in Bradford is a really important component that makes this city really special and, and very much a valued part of our community. Well, since you are such an eminent leader in the British public sector, 
we have this uh, feeling, and, and I have written books about this, that because India is such an old civilization and with such a, uh, a timeless culture in many different religions and languages, it has got a huge stock of wisdom and experience about dealing with uh, social problems, economic problems, uh, even mental health, physical health, etc. When I look at Britain, and I'm a very concerned citizen of Britain, I find that this wisdom very rarely comes into the public arena, is very rarely discussed or used as a way, as a method or as a, as a resource for setting uh, public policies. Uh, and yet, to me, it's such a lost opportunity, you know, I and mean, let's take a simple example like health, you know, we've got a big economic crisis, we've got a hundred billion pound health budget, most of it going into uh, treatment rather than prevention. I agree. And, and in India, we have one of the oldest uh, preventative healthcare programs called Yoga, which is actually non-religious, non-secular and available to all and is being practiced in this country on the fringes of the country but not on the mainstream. That's just one example. The other example is family values. You know, a family is at the root of social cohesion. If you don't have cohesion in the family, don't even talk about a community, you know. And, and you really what we have seen up and down the country is the Indians having strong family values and actually building communities wherever they go, whether even if there are few of them, you mentioned the Hindu temple. You know, in spite of their small population, to think that they could bring the resourcefulness, the creativity, the energy to build their own place of worship, to create and, and keep alive their culture in this uh, part of England is itself a phenomenal strength, a strength which any country would, thinking broad with a vision, would want to die for, would want to embrace, you know. But yet there is a fear. I mean, w what do you think? Do you actually use the wisdom of India in setting some of the policies here in Bradford? I think that, um, I mean, I think this is a very complex issue. And I think increasingly we consult different communities in shaping our thinking. So, for example, at the moment, um, with our partners in the district, we have to set a, a new community strategy for Bradford. It's called a Sustainable Community Strategy under the Local Government Act, which is basically about setting our ambition and our priorities and our plans for the future of the district. Not the council, but the whole place, the economy, health, um, what we're going to do about problems like crime, the environment, etc. And um, at the moment, even before the sort of strategic leaders are considering the detailed options, we're consulting widely um, through the local communities, through community groups, through different organisations, listening to what people have to say. And so I think we're starting to um, look at our policy formulation in a different way, but I think it's early days. And um, whether and, and I think that we're, we're as well placed as any other British city in this respect. But what is absolutely right, and I think you've just really reinforced the point for me, is that in a place as diverse as Bradford, then there are lots of different experiences, lots of different skills, lots of different um, cultures where, where these sort of lessons and public policy, etc., has been handled in very different ways available to us and maybe one of the challenges for us is to um, rather than taking a very Anglo-Saxon view of the world and then trying to sort of make that a diverse um, vision of the place that we actually need to bring these experiences to the fore more. It's very interesting, I mean I don't have the answer to that but it's certainly a, d a debate that I'm very willing and I'm sure and the politicians will be very willing to participate in as well. I. I suspect as well that um, some of our minority communities um, have in, perhaps in the past lacked the confidence to really express their, their sort of views and bringing lessons from their culture to bear in some of that policy development. That's just a feeling I might have, that I have, that might be the case. Uh, and, but I do think it's an area that we should be exploring and finding out how we can bring this because there's no doubt that um, public service in this country is facing uh, an absolute transformation. The, the, the scale of the reductions that we're facing 
means that we have to completely change our relationship as citizens. We have to explore um, prevention and self-help rather than just treating the symptoms of the problem. And I completely agree with your analysis that all of the health expenditures in treatment rather than in prevention. And I'd certainly like to see a big shift towards um, resources going into enabling people to um, tackle issues in the community mm. without the need to um, go into uh, into hospital for treatment uh, in, in a lot of cases and that would that would improve productivity that would improve efficiency and, and much more importantly get much better outcomes for people as well because if people are living healthier lifestyles if we're able to particularly for older people to meet their needs earlier so they don't get sucked into an acute system which happens now then not only is the cost of the public purse reduced but actually the outcomes for those individuals mm. is greatly enhanced as well mm. yeah. okay so if you I, i'm a, a huge believer that um this cannot just be about cuts this has to be about economic growth as well and um one of the huge benefits we have with our diverse population is the creativity and enterprise that we have in our population and in, in particular uh, our South Asian communities bring that spirit of enterprise. So in the last few years Bradford has had a much higher rate of business startups than anywhere else in the Yorkshire region and there are more people wanting to start a business in Bradford than anywhere else in the country. And as people, you know, public sector jobs are reducing, we need new businesses to grow jobs and to grow wealth. Um, and I think that we're already very clear that one of the key drivers for that economic growth will come from our South Asian communities. And um, that is hugely important in terms of the future of Bradford. And, and I think it's hugely important from a, from a social and community cohesion point of view to see um, people from minority communities, not just positively participating, but if you like, leading the recovery economically. And I think that changes people's status or community status in the city. And there's some hugely important areas there.